So our next speaker is uh, just going to do a very brief uh, uh, talk, uh, Joanna Keeler from Can you hear me King's. okay? Yeah. yeah. Hi, um, yeah, I'm just here to extend, I suppose, GA's amazing talk um, into humans and talk briefly about um, a study that we have planned to start in January next year. And um, this is at King's College London, so I come from the Eating Disorders Research Group there. Um, and the study will be um, funded by the Medical Research Council Developmental um, Pathway Funding Scheme. And we'll be looking at the use of oral ketamine for people with anorexia nervosa um, who also have treatment-resistant depression. So my transitions haven't worked very well, but there I am. And um, just to introduce the study team, uh, we've got the eating disorder experts up there. Um, Janet's in the audience, so please do speak to her in the break if you have any thoughts on our, our, on our study. We've got the um, ketamine experts there, and we've got Mittal at the conference, so also you can speak to him, and also myself, obviously. Um, we've got a great statistics team and a qualitative researcher working on the trial. So just to extend some of the background um, that we heard just previously, um, but to speak specifically about um, mood, so um, at least 50% of people that have anorexia nervosa also have a comorbid depressive disorder and more have um, depressive symptoms. And this is actually one of the most consistent predictors of poor outcome in this patient group. Um, despite that, we don't really have any effective treatments for treating depression in anorexia. So classic SSRIs are um, yeah, typically um, ineffective. And we don't have any pharmacological treatments that are approved or licensed for um, the indication of anorexia at all. Um, so our hypothesis is that alleviating, alleviating depression in people with anorexia nervosa might improve their outcomes in, in the long term. Um, so this is our study design. Um, we're looking at people that have um, what we call severe enduring anorexia. We also can call it um, protracted or um, unresolved anorexia. So uh, we're using quite a liberal threshold of um, three years duration. And people should also have treatment resistant depression, which is quite common in this patient group. Um, we're looking at adults aged 18 to 65. And um, I guess the most important exclusion criteria is that they need to be medically stable and they have to have a BMI of at least, at least 14, but we don't have an upper threshold on the BMI. Um, and they should be deemed to be at low risk of suicidality um, when entering the trial. So um, they will be, there will be 60 participants. Um, they'll be randomized at an equal ratio to um, either placebo or um, an abuse deterrent formulation of oral ketamine um, that oh, I should have mentioned we're doing this study in collaboration with Neurocentric, so we're using their um, immediate, re immediate release formulation of ketamine. And um, the first four doses will be taken in person at the CRF, and we'll start with one tablet, which is um, 80 milligrams, and um, yeah, showing tolerability will um, increase that to a maximum of 160. This is our sort of plan at the moment, but it might, it might be open to changing. Um, and then once we've established that um, it's safe and tolerable for them taking it in the first four sessions, then they will go through a phase of taking it at home. Um, and that will go on for six months in total. So the treatment period will be six months. Um, and then we have a main time point at 28 days, at three months, at six months. And then we have a one month follow up at, at seven months. So our main outcomes for this study are feasibility. It's the first RCT that's actually been done in this population. So it's important to sort of um, yeah, um, demonstrate feasibility of the study. So we'll be looking at recruitment and retention, completion of the assessments. Um, secondary outcomes will be acceptability, safety and tolerability. So things like side effects and um, incidents of any adverse effects or events. And then in terms of clinical outcomes, um, we'll be looking uh, depressive symptoms, obviously, um, suicidality, eating disorder, psychopathology, and quality of life. Um, and we, coll we collaborated with people with lived experience to develop these. So we'll also be looking at other things that were identified as important, such as um, sleep quality, interestingly, and um, energy levels and uh, obsessive thoughts, things like that. Um, and then in terms of sort of additional outcomes, we'll also be looking at ketamine metabolites, um, BDNF levels, cognitive function, and BMI as well. 
So that was just a brief whistle stop tour of our, tour, um, of our sort of preliminary trial design. But as we're in the sort of um, early stages of the study and we haven't form formalized the protocol, we'd be really happy to hear people's thoughts in the break. Um, I doubt we'll have time for questions now, but um, yeah, please do approach me in the break. Well then, time for one question. If anybody's got any thoughts about that design or the dose, perhaps? Dose or 160, wasn't it, the maximum? Yeah, yeah so the dose um, was, it's, yeah, we, we're thinking about changing it, but actually you'll hear later on today about the phase one results from King's, from the Neurocentrics study. Um, and it was based on that that we thought that that would be the best dose to use for this study. Yeah. Okay, there's one here, so not no behind you. She, she was in there. She got there first. <laughs> Inclusion criteria: you had TRD alongside. Um, why did you have people with treatment as resistant depression rather than just people who were anorexia and like major depressive disorder? Why, 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 why TRD why alongside? TRD? Yeah, I mean, um, this is something. So we've been planning the study for quite a few years, and. Um, yeah, we were anticipating a lot of resistance to using it in this patient group, and actually a research group in New Zealand failed to get ethics to use it in people with anorexia. So one of the initial reasons why we decided this is because it's it's a bit easier to sort of segue into anorexia by including people that have TRD as well. Um, but actually, you know, now it's becoming more popular. It kind of seems, you know, in future we'll probably just have people with depressive symptoms, um, and even maybe in the future, if if it's shown to be effective, maybe for eating disorder symptoms as well. Um, I don't, yeah, but we can't we can't sort of speculate on that yet. Okay. okay. Lovely. Thank Thanks very much indeed. That's great.